What's up guys and welcome to the second episode of our new mini-series Integrated Graphics versus Half-Life 2. Now today we're going to be looking at the chip from the kings of the APU, AMD. This is the chip that we'll be looking at. It's a little bit weird, but we have some high hopes for it. Let's see how we get on. So the chip we're going to be looking at today is this one. This is the AMD Athlon 5350. It's one of three Athlon processors that fit onto the AM1 platform, and it sits right there in the middle of the stack with its four cores, four threads, and a base frequency of 2.05 GHz. Even though it's just a 25 watt processor, and that's less power than a light bulb, it also houses a Radeon R3 graphics chipset, so I'm actually expecting some decent results from this. Now we know the game Half-Life 2 isn't that demanding, but quite recently when we've started testing it against my GPUs, it's actually shown that it can get some of them to struggle. So let's hope that this one isn't one of them. But enough about the APU, let's get it into a system and see how it performs. Okay, so we managed to get into the game and everything's looking pretty good. We're currently getting an average of 55 frames per second and that's just on the loading menu. And if we go check our settings, we'll see what we've actually got configured. We're currently in 1080p under advanced. Everything is actually set to high, but we do have water detail as simple reflections. We'll change that to reflect all and we'll leave AA off for this test. We'll just apply that. Now, unfortunately, the loading on this CPU isn't that great. It takes a while to load different things in and out, which is a little bit less than the CPU we previously took a look at. But we'll get into the game and we'll see how it performs inside. So the experience isn't so great straight away. We're in a big open area. Everything is on high. It looks a pretty good game. It's not looking too bad, but we are just averaging around 32 frames per second. We'll continue with a bit of the game in this setting and we'll see how far it actually goes. I did kind of expect a little bit more out of this little APU because AMD are pretty good at making APUs, so I didn't think it would be this bad. I mean, it's a playable experience, but you're getting more of a console kind of performance than anything else. Once we've got down and we can do a bit of moving, we can see what's going on. For some reason, uh, Gordon Freeman can do a 360 degree turn in a car. Get out of here. So we're getting a lot of frame drops when there's a lot on the screen. Back into this car. We'll start doing a bit of driving around. So, yeah, our frame time isn't great with this CPU at these settings. We're still averaging around 32 frames per second, increasing a little bit now and again but the average is pretty much sticking to the same. So let's have a go at reducing some of those settings. We'll go back to our video options. We'll put everything into low. Let's see if we can get this to actually run. We'll put simple water detail reflections, put the shadow detail on low, and we'll drop the filtering mode down to four times, and we'll see if that makes any difference. So that's made a little bit of a difference. We haven't actually changed that much of the quality in the game. I do believe the textures won't be that good when we actually get close up to things. Yeah, they're very blurry, so that's going to be a bit of a takeaway from this. But we have managed to increase the performance quite a bit. We're currently averaging 47 frames per second, so that's up from our 32, 33 before. And it's a bit more of a smoother experience. We're not getting as many frame time drops or anything like that. Now, the only other option that we've got to go with this, because we're still not really hitting our magic target of 60 frames per second, 
is to actually lower the resolution. So we'll just get our vehicle somewhere and then we'll give it a go at dropping that resolution. Drop our resolution down to, we'll go for 1600 by 900 and we'll see if that makes a difference. Screen's just gonna reset while it comes back. Go to okay. Reset our stats. And now that's looking a little bit better. So we're actually getting a average frames per second now of 64. So we're beating that target of 60 frames per second. But the quality is heavily reduced, but it is more than playable. Our frame times are not looking too bad when we're in this resolution. I don't want to go down to 720 because I don't think the game looks very good at that. So we'll keep it up for this. Totally missed the bridge there. But yeah, it's actually quite playable. Let's just jump the settings up a little bit and see if we can actually get the quality of the picture a little bit better. We'll put everything onto medium. We'll put texture detail onto high. Shader detail onto high. Shadow detail, we'll leave it medium and we'll keep the simple reflections and we'll keep everything else the same. This is kind of like a medium setting now, but we want those high textures so we can actually have a bit of a quality picture. As I said before, it takes a while to actually get anything to load on this CPU. A bit of a shame really because the other one that we did previously actually loaded everything perfectly fine it was it was really good so now we are getting an average of 59 58 frames per second with the current at uh, it changes up and down but we can just about get over 60 frames per second which is not a bad experience playing this game it's a single player game it's quite old Generally, when it first got played, you'd have played it in a lot less than this. 720 probably would have been a good target when this came out. That was probably high-end more than anything. So you can get one. We are getting a bit of frame drop now, probably as these textures are loading. But it is playable. Quite surprising, the little Athlon 5350 with its built-in Radeon R3 graphics seems to be able to play things, well, particularly this game reasonably well. Okay, so they were not the results we actually expected or wanted. We wanted it to do a little bit better, but obviously it couldn't get there. We did manage to get a playable experience at pretty much every setting we had, but in 1080p, even with low settings, we pretty much got a console-like experience. Once we actually dropped the resolution down to 720, we did manage to actually hit our target at 60 frames per second, but that's not the target overall. Of course, we also had to test this CPU against a more static benchmark, so we retested it again against Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, and in particular the video stress test that they provide in that. And although we saw similar results, even though it's a little bit more demanding than the base game, we managed to see an average of just over 40 frames per second. Now that test was running 1080p full settings all the way up, but it did give us a bit of a benchmark to compare it to other ones with. Now at 40 frames per second, obviously that actually beats the G630 that we tested in our last video, so AMD have taken the crown on our leaderboards. But the question now is, can they hold it? We want to know, what APU do you think we should test next? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And also drop us a like if you actually like this mini series so that we know that we should continue doing it.